In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. I mean, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Great to be back again with you, and uh, after a beautiful time that the Lord really showed us what does it mean to live as a Christian person? What does it mean to live as a person that is actually totally fitting the reading of today? Totally fitting the reading of today. The reading of from the Pauline and then the Catholic epistle, the Acts, even the Synexarium and then the Psalm and the Gospel today. But this is exactly what we're here for. And this is exactly what, you know, thank God and thank thanks to the Holy Spirit, guide us in direction that uh, always, always kind of gets our attention and opens our eyes to the purpose and the actual purpose. It just came with a beautiful group from here and uh, other couple other places from a beautiful time in Bolivia serving there and actually to be being served there, not, be, not serving there, being served by the people to get our focus back again on uh, what does it mean to be Christian? What does it mean to be Christian? Comes the gospel today uh, with the, the, the beautiful and the famous part of Matthew 18, and the famous saying of the Lord, unless verse Luke, Matthew, Matthew 18, 3. I'm still kind of sleepy a little bit, so be patient with me. As surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will, be, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. The beautiful and well-known verse. But most of the time, actually, we misunderstand this verse. And when, when we probably heard this before, but I want to really reiterate again this meaning today and see where does this fit in the, in the whole understanding of uh, our purpose, unless you become like children. And we always write away, you know, the, 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 the image of, of a pig of, a, of, a, of, a, of the children comes to our mind as the, the, the uh, simple, the forgiving, uh, and all those things. But the actual meaning is not like that. If we understand the scripture from the, scripture from the, the cultural concept and aspect that it was written at that time, we look at the children, and who are the children? Who were the children at that time? They are the nothing. They are the neglected. They are the forgotten. They are the useless. They are everything that we can see in our culture, in our day and life today, the person that is in need of help. And the Lord is saying that's why, again, he says it and clarify it more and more again in verse 4. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child, humble himself meaning be like one of them. Be like one of them. Pay attention to the, to the nothing. Pay attention to the forgotten. Pay attention to the person that nobody remembers them. And that's the actual meaning of the verse, unless you become one like them. And we'll see how much this is more and more clarified from the rest of the reading. And again, as we're coming from, from, a, from a beautiful time, like we, 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 we've spent in the last week, and you see exactly that this is the only way. We're just talking with His Grace Bishop Yusuf before we left, and he goes like, everything that we do, whether it's, it's fasting or reading or praying or learning hymns or doing whatever, if it doesn't lead us to love God and through the love of God we love each other, then it's meaningless. If nothing moves our heart towards those little children, again, not the babies, the children who are neglected, the person that's neglected, the person that is fragile, the person that is forgotten, it is very clear. This is, this is the only way to enter the kingdom. It is very clear. And sadly, it is the very most neglected part. And that's why the Lord keeps going and saying, well, you know, recognize and see and really point out what is it that's very, very, very dear to your heart. Is it your eye? Is it your hand? Is it your, your, your most important member in your body? Are you willing to take this and plug it up, out, and remove it or not? Are we really willing to recognize what are the things that are really occupying our life, the things that all our life is revolving around and say, Lord, 
you know what, I'm ready to give this and put it under your feet. Because I want to go and be like one of those little ones. But when we look at and when we hear this message, see, this is so hard. This part of the, of the gospel is always one of the very, very, very hard parts to recognize. And, to, and usually we like to skip it. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. That, that, that part is not for me. Right. But if you look at it again, this, it's very clear. And again, it's not the literal, but it, but it goes on with the, with, the, with, the, with the main scope of the gospel. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it out. It is better for you to enter with one eye and so forth. Again, and here the sin is that we always kind of very, very, very limited and focus. Okay, the eye sin is when I look at a bad look or a lustful look. How about when I look at a person that is in need and I neglect them? How about when I turn my eye away from the person that is suffering? How about when I turn my eye away from the person that I know that they need a, an encouragement, need a prayer? I said, no, 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 no. I have my own trouble. That is the meaning of today's scripture. Unless I become one of them. That's why St. Paul in the Pauline epistle today, he's, he's going so harsh and so hard on the Galatians, right? Galatians 1, after he gives thanks, and then he goes straight to the point right away. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, different way of worshiping God, different way of knowing God, different way of understanding, different way that will think will lead us into the kingdom. But he goes, that's not it. I marvel how fast you turned away from the teaching. This is not what we taught you. This is not the gospel. This is not the gospel. And that's why he says in verse 10, for I do, for do I know, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? Are we pleasing God or pleasing men? Pleasing ourselves and say, no, 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 let's not, let's not get there, you know. Thank God for what we have, and let's not even think about anybody else. And let's think more and more how to improve, how to excel, how to add money, how to add titles, how to add luxury, how to add everything. And we're not thinking of the little ones. The Acts today is really awakening for everyone. Acts chapter 5. When the first fathers were preaching and were going out of themselves and out of everything that they, 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 they can do in order to protect themselves and went out to preach, and then they were imprisoned. And then it says in 5.19, But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Can this be the message of each one of us today? Go and preach. Not necessarily again we go and preach by voice. Can we go and become again like those Little children, feel for them, acknowledge them, acknowledge the forgotten, acknowledge the fragile, acknowledge the person that is struggling. At least we pray. At least, you know, we, 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 heard, we, we, we looked and, and, and watched and and heard stories of people who are not able even to eat. Or people that even were pushed to, to, in some cases, to lose hope and kill themselves because they cannot support a family. And as uh, our great 
And Babulis, Bishop of Africa, says, here we are sitting in the AC and we're you know, <laughs> enjoying everything and not even thinking about anybody else. So what should we do? What should we do? If you notice the three psalms of today, if anybody paid attention or if you read them even before, the three psalms, psalm of, of Vespers, psalm of Matter, and psalm of the Gospel, they all start with one word. Anybody did their homework at all? Blessed. Yes. And it's not just a, oh, wow. <laughs> it's a coincidence. No. When the Holy Spirit puts the reading, the Holy Spirit is guiding the church. So let's see exactly, again, what are the things that we can do? What is the, 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 the scripture teaching and telling us? How can we really become like one of those little children? Number one, the, gospel, the Psalm of Vespers yesterday. Psalm 127 or 128. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. There you go, right away. <laughs> if each one of us is always, I'm the first one, always in his presence, always in the reverence of God, I will see God in every person. I will always recognize when I'm so much in, in, involved with my own business and my own self and my own luxury and my own family and my own vacations and my own everything. I said, no, but the fear of God pushes me for something else. Blessed the man that, or who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. First one. The fear of the Lord. Not fear, terror, but fear of the awe, of the reverence. Fearing him and seeing him in, the, in everything. And knowing that, you know what, he is the God. And because he is the God we have to show him the love that he is showing us. And out of that love, we love everybody else. It's great Bishop Yusuf was saying, everybody means Everyone. Everyone. The Christian, the non-Christian, the Egyptian, the non-Egyptian, the Copt, the non-Copt, the Orthodox, the non-Orthodox, everyone. Everyone. Love everyone. Because we are always in the fear of God. Matin Psalm, Psalm 41 or 40. Blessed is he who what considers the poor. And this is very, very interesting text. Blessed is he who considered the poor. I was kind of like wondering about what, what, is, what is considered. What is considered? And who is the poor? Two things. What does it mean to consider and who is the poor? Let's take consider first. Consider is very, you know, if we look, look it up in the, in the original, which is sakal, which is from it, the, the Arabic word shakl, yushakl. So consider the poor is actually being what? Being like the poor. Not just looking at the poor, but the actual meaning is no. Blessed is the one, the, the word is used figuratively to mean to become like. So it's not just walking around and seeing a poor person, oh, may God bless you. No. <laughs> no. Blessed is the one who considers the poor, is to become like the poor, to feel the agony of the person. And not only the poor in materialistic and money, but the poor in everything. The person that is poor in, in personality, <laughs> in self-confidence, in patience. You go on and on and on. Are we becoming like them, meaning feeling for them? Or not? Blessed is, the, is he who considers the poor. Again, considers becoming prudent, becoming like. And the poor is even more and more 
interesting word. It's more of the, the, the word itself is, has some kind of, 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 of uh, connotation to what they call um, the movement on the, of the, of the um, you know, the, the, the old watch, old clocks, the pendulum thing? Person that is going back and forth. <laughs> That is the actual word, right? The, the meaning of the uh, pendulous movement, <laughs> not stable, not fixed, but going back and forth. Aren't we all like that? <laughs> Do you consider that person or not? Do you become like them in feeling with them, as St. Paul says? Who doesn't suffer and I don't suffer, right? Let's rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. It doesn't need a trip across the ocean. <laughs> it doesn't need time off. It is a day-to-day -day life to consider the poor. And finally, the gospel we just read now in the gospel of the liturgy of St. Matthew and Psalm 118 or 119, and then it says what again? Blessed is what are the undefiled in the way. The undefiled in the way. Those who are actually walk in righteousness. And walk in righteousness. Blessed, the first one is what? Remember? Vesper, no, the Vesper was blessed is the? You forgot. Psalm, hmm? Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Thank you. Fear the Lord. And consider the poor and walk in righteousness. It's not, a, it's not chemistry, as we say. Right? It's not like a huge, big formula. How can I do that? But it's the day-to-day -day understanding that we are in his presence. The day-to-day -day understanding that life is not only about me. The day-to-day -day understanding that this is what, how we show love to the Lord, by loving each other, by loving, again, the poor, the person that's stuck in pendulous movement, <laughs> doesn't know how to stop. That's, that's what he wants us to do, unless we become like those little children, become, each one of us become the forgotten, become the marginalized, become the useless, become the one that no one remembers. By sharing with them, by remembering that, by knowing that everything that God has given us is for that purpose, to share and to live that love that he wants us to live. Let's, let's pray for that mindset. Let's pray that our life every day become living on mission not necessarily going across and leaving the country and going for a week and taking some pictures and being so inspired and then coming back again to our own boring, routine, aimless life. That's not the point. That's not the point. That's why we go, because we want to take the spirit as our great, one of the fathers that served with us in Kenya goes, you can't leave Africa and go to, you can't take Africa back home with you but you can take God who you met back home with you. And we are with him, living in the fear of God. Blessed is he who fears the Lord. Blessed he who considers the poor. And blessed he who lives righteousness. May God change our mind and allow us really to become a reason to bring joy, to show the love of God to each one. And honestly, honestly, this is the way, this is the only way we get out of our own problems and our troubles. Honestly. When we live that life, our own life becomes nothing. Becomes nothing. And how much joyful it is to share the love of God with somebody else. How much joyful it is to go and have a little orphan child comes to you and hug you and see the love and the smile that brings. 
And you take this back and say, you know, this, is, this is how I want to live. This is how we should all live. To him the glory, now and forever, to the ages of all ages. Amen.